Greetings and welcome to the Culinary Arts course, Unit 3, Ingredients Used for Cooking. So in the previous session, we were discussing on different types of ingredients such as culinary seeds, for example, carom seeds, mustard seeds, fennel seeds, coriander seeds. So this is what we were discussing. After which we were discussing on different types of culinary nuts, like for example, peanuts, walnut, almond, pistachio, crown nuts, uh, hazelnut, coconut. And we were also discussing on different types of herbs, such as rosemary, lemongrass, thyme, oregano, basil, etc. In today's session, let's discuss on different kinds of spices that is used in culinary. So when I talk about spices, spices are basically used in cuisines, especially in the Southern Asian countries, such as India, Sri Lanka, Pakistani, Indonesia, Malaysians, and also in Bangladesh as well. They're also used in Mediterranean, European and American cuisines, but not as much as other Southern Asian cuisines as well. So they are widely used in American cuisines, European cuisines, and also in Mediterranean cuisines. A spice can be any part of the plant. It can be either the pod, it can be a leaf, it can be a bark, or even it can be the flowering part of a plant, where these spices have a very pungent and aromatic flavor and taste, where it is used as a flavoring agent in any of the products. For example, if you're making a rice product, when we add little amount of spices, it kind of enhances the aroma in the food. Similarly, not too much or not neither too less of spices have to be used. A minimal amount as required quantity has to be used in order to extract an appropriate flavor from it. Now, first one, as you can see in the picture here in the PPT, the first spices that we can see here is an asafoetida. It is also called as hing in common language, or it is also called as stinging gum. Now, this is basically a dried gum that is acquired from a tap root of a herb found in Iran, and they're actually mildly used for a tempering. Whenever we temper certain gravies and curries, especially in Indian cuisine, a pinch of this hing has been added or even a saforita has been added where it also acts like a medicinal purposes where it, and it kind of helps in digestive purpose as well. Now, it is also widely used in certain pickle preparations and also certain gravies as well. Next one is a bay leaf. So bay leaf is also one of the most aromatic leaf where it also has a bitter aftertaste and also a sharp pungent taste as well. Also called as Thais Patta in Indian, in Indian local languages. Now the fragrance of this leaf is more noticeable than their taste and they're basically used in stalks Stock is one of the most basic preparations in culinary. They're also used in soups in Indian cuisines like shorba, bay leaf is widely used. Apart from this, they're also used in desserts and also for any rice preparations, bay leaf is mandatorily used. So bay leaf is majoritively used in a dried form rather than a fresh form. Next one is the cardamom seeds. So cardamom seeds are basically a pod form that grows in the uh, basically near the stem of a plant and it is very greenish, brightish green in color. Cardamom seeds, uh, the seeds and also the outer covering is widely used. They're majoritively used in Indian desserts for the flavoring agent. Apart from Indian desserts, they're also used in savory and sweet snacks and also in many gravies and rice preparations as well. Aromatic has a very aromatic and sharp taste and also very pungentful and flavorful aftertaste. Now this cardamom, it is available either in black and green color. Green color is less pungent, whereas black cardamom is more stronger and more pungent in flavor. It is also called as elaichi in a common language, mostly used in Asian countries and widely used for both sweet and spicy preparations. And these cardamoms is widely uh, used even for making tea as we have cardamom tea, where it kind of enhances and it gives soothing flavor and a refreshment and a fresh aftertaste once it has been added to the product. Next one is the cinnamon. Now, this cinnamon is also called as dalchini in a common language, in Indian common language, and it is also bright 
brown in color to a very lightish brown in color. Cinnamon is basically obtained from the bark of a tree. Now, this cinnamon is widely used for uh, masalas preparations, that is in Indian cuisine. It is also used as a dessert. It is one of the most versatile spices as it goes well with either spicy flavor savory dishes and also for the sweet desserts as well. Cinnamon is widely used. In European and American cuisine, cinnamon widely used in a dessert as it's more versatile and it goes along with the sweet dishes. In Indian cuisines and in Asian countries it is widely used in curries and gravies as it's widely used for the savory products as well it is one of the most common preparations one of the most common ingredient that is widely used in a most famous indian masala that is in garam masala cinnamon powder and cardamom is widely used it's one of the most essential ingredients that has to be used next one is the cloves now, this cloves is basically dark brownish in color to black in color and they are also called as long or lavanga in a common language. They are more aromatic in color and this is basically the buds of the flower of the plant which is being used and they are widely used in Asian, African, Mexican and Middle Eastern cuisines and it kind of gives a very hot taste in the palate and it also has a very strong pungent aroma when it has been used in any rice preparations or even in gravies as well. It is also used as a flavoring agent for desserts in order to give a, a mild soothing flavor in the desserts as well. Next one is the dry mango powder. Dry mango powder is kind of gives a very sour aftertaste. It is also a replacement of a citric agent. Now this pale yellowish and green in color, it is very fine powder. It is basically uh, used in charts, especially in chaat masalas or any Indian snacks preparations. It is called as amchur in a common languages. It kind of brings a sourness to the stews, to the gravies or any kind of a snacks preparations. And, and uh, especially in charts, Mango powder is widely used. Next one is the mace. It's also called the mace flower. Now this mace flower is basically yellowish to orange in color and it is basically a covering of nutmeg. So nutmeg is again a spices. The covering of the nutmeg is where we have a mace. It is called Javi three in common languages and is used to impart a light orangish color in the stew. Apart from this, it also gives a very light aromatic agents, especially in gravies and in desserts as well. Next one is the nutmeg. So nutmeg is basically, uh, it's very similar to a walnut shell and it is uh, round in shape and it has basically very sweet aromatic taste and also flavor. It is extremely pungent full, so very a minimal quantity of this nutmeg is widely used. It's also called as jhaipal and this is mainly used in Indian, especially in Mughlai cuisines. Widely nutmeg is used and it is also one of the most common and very important ingredient, especially in garam masala. And it is also used for making certain sweet desserts, especially in Malaysian countries. A pinch of nutmeg is widely used in the desserts in order to get a more flavorful and a sweet aftertaste in the product. Next one is the chili or the paprika. Now this chili or paprika in Indian cuisine, it is one of the most common ingredients that is widely used in any of the savory gravies and dishes. It is available in different size and shapes as based on the hotness of these paprika. Now this paprika is basically a long thin pointed end and it is often obtained in various colors and it uh, kind of brings a very hotness sensation in the palate. It is also called as mirch in common language. Next one is basically the, the saffron. Saffron is basically a flower fragrance, the stigma of a flower. It is widely obtained in Kashmir. It basically uh, gives out a color in the product and it is widely used in uh, rice preparations and also in dessert preparations. Saffron is one of the most in main ingredient which it imparts a very pale to bright yellowish in color. It is also called as kesar in common language and this saffron is one of the most expensive spices around the world. It is used in Indian sweets especially in desserts, Indian desserts. And this is one of the most common ingredients 
that is widely used in kulfi. Kulfi is an Indian sweets where a pistachio and also saffron and sugar is widely used. It is also used for garnishing, especially in the rice preparations. When we make biryani, a little bit of milk and the saffron is mixed together and added on top to impart a bright yellow in color. Next one is the star anise. Now this star anise is basically a flower or a star like shape, which is dried brown color fruit with a cluster of eight sections each containing a seeds. Now also call it chakra food because it resembles like a star. It represents like a flower. Now it is used in tea, especially in, 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 a, in India. And it is also one of the most common spices that is used in biryani, that is a rice preparations. And it is also one of the most important spices, especially in garam masala powder that we use. Now, what is garam masala? Garam masala is a spice herb. It's a spice mixture powder that is widely used in a rice preparation. So any gravy preparations that especially in Indian cuisine. It is also used to bring out the flavor of the meat dishes. And in Vietnamese cuisine, it is widely used in soups and Chinese cuisine. It is used for marinations and especially uh, in French, it is used in for preparing wine. A little bit of star anise is used in order to uh, give out a very sweet note after taste. Next one is the turmeric. Turmeric is basically a tuberous of turmeric plant and it includes, it actually gives out, induces a very bright yellowish in color. And it has a very hot taste after taste and it does have a very nice sweet aroma in the turmeric. It is also called as haldi in common language, often used fresh for pickles and it is dried formed and powdered and in order to get a powdered form of this turmeric. And it is one of the most common ingredient that is used for many gravies in Indian cuisines and also in southern part of the country, southern Asian cuisines as well. It is also used for marinations in the curries and gravies and also for the meat also turmeric is widely used as it kind of gives a medicinal properties. It kills the germs and bacteria that is present in the meat and also it is also used to cure the wound or heal the wound in case of bleeding or a cut in a finger a pinch of turmeric is added where it kind of acts like an antiseptic. Next one is a vanilla pod or vanilla bean. Now this vanilla bean is basically a long dark brown kind of a, a pod, which basically gives a very sweet aroma in the flavor. Aroma, uh, this vanilla is widely used for the dessert preparations and it is widely obtained from Kerala in India. Because of this humidity and climate, Kerala is one of the region where the vanilla has been widely produced. Now, the aroma extracted from the plant is available either in liquid form, where we call it as vanilla essence. It is also obtained in the paste form, where we call vanilla paste, or the actual form of vanilla pot can be directly added to any desserts. For example, it is used for making a lot of continental desserts and also including ice creams and many other yogurts and cakes preparations. Vanilla is one of the most important ingredient that is used as an essence flavor like an aromatic flavor in order to cut down any kind of a egg preparation smells in it. So this is what we discussed in this chapter. So I repeat, let's do a small recap on what we understood. We understood on, we studied or we learned on about the different types of culinary seeds, culinary nuts, culinary herbs, and also culinary spices that is used for preparation. Always remember too much is too bad. So do not use too much of spices. It can spoil the dish. It can overpower the other ingredients aroma. Either using too less can also not not impart too much of flavor in the product. A minimal usage of these spices, nuts and herbs is always advisable and it is always good to use of fresh herbs and fresh ingredients rather than using a dried form because fresh herbs, fresh spices and fresh culinary seeds and nuts always gives out the best maximum flavor as compared to the dehydrated form. Now let's understand about the next chapter that is again the ingredients used for cooking that is chapter 3 open electives. In this upcoming chapter we will understand about the different classifications of fruits and vegetables. As we can see here what will the students learning objective in the end of this chapter 
chapter, you'll be able to understand different types of fruits and vegetables available. You'll also be able to outcome is that you'll identify different types of fruits, vegetables, a right method of purchasing, how to purchase a right fruits and right vegetables, and also a right method of storage of these fruits and vegetables in order to increase the durability of it. And also what are the nutrition values that is obtained from fruits and vegetables as well. Now, as we can start with the fruits now, now fruits are basically available in different categories of systems. It is obtained as a simple one of fruits. The first one you can see here is the berry category. Category. So fruits are basically classified into different categories. So the first one is the berry categories. So here in the berry categories, it is basically small and it's a juicy fruit with a thin skin on the outside. It has a maximum flesh inside. Now these berries are highly perishable. That is, it doesn't last long for more than one or two days after plucking from it. Some berries it includes, you have blackberries, cranberries, strawberries and blackberries, raspberries and also grapes as well. So these berries basically have a kind of one seed in the center. It is also called as a pit. The seeds are also called as a pit. It has maximum juicy flesh outside and these berries are basically covered with a very thin skin on the outer side. Next ones are basically the pits. Now these pits are basically outer skins are very soft and they're fleshy fruit. Now this fruit is basically surrounded with a single or a hard one stone or a pit. It is very similar to the berries which contains some pits includes like for example you have cherries, apricot, nectarines, peaches and plum. Now for example let's say you're having a fresh cherry. When you have a fresh cherry you get one single seed in the center. Right, so that single seed is called as a pit. Whereas the similarly, there are different berries where it is also called as a berry family where it doesn't have a seed in the center. Like for example, let's say you're having a strawberry. Strawberry doesn't have a seed in the center, rather the strawberry has a skin on the outer skin. Whereas if you're having a blueberry cranberries, they do not have a seeds in the center. So these come under the berries family. In the pits family, you can have cherries where it have a one single seed in the center, or let's say peaches, plums, or nectarines. These have one single seed in the center. Next one is the core. Now, what is a core? Core or a stone fruit. Now, these are the fruits where a central seeds containing a core surrounded with a, a thick layer of fresh across the thing. For example, apples and pears, they're called as a core or a stone fruit where you have multiple seeds in the center, but it's very smaller in quantity, but you have maximum kind of a flesh outside the seeds is where it's called as a core fruits. Next one is citrus family or it is also called a citrus fruit. Now this citrus fruits, for example, it includes orange, pink grapefruit, white grapefruit, lemon, pomelo, tangerine, lime. Something that is very citric in taste and it also has a very sour taste in your palate is what is called as a citrus family or citrus fruit. For example, let's say you're tasting a lime or an orange. It kind of gives a very sour aftertaste, right? So these belongs to a citrus family. Now this, it has a very thicker outer rind. That is, it has a very thick outer skin and a thin membrane separates a flesh into a segment. Now what is a membrane? Now when you peel out the orange, you can see a white color before you take out the flesh of the orange, you can see a white color kind of a skin surrounded inside the orange peel. Now this is basically a membrane. Some kind of a citrus fruits includes, like for example, I've mentioned earlier, you have orange, tangerine, grapefruit. So these are the examples of the citrus family. Next ones are the melons. Now these melons are basically large and they are juicy and fruit. They have a very thick skin and also a thick flesh in the center and there are multiple seeds in the center. For example, let's say you're having a musk melon or a watermelon. If you can see watermelon and musk melon, they have multiple seeds in the center and they have a very thick flesh and they have a very thick skin on the outside. For example, you have cantaloupe, you have honeydew, watermelon, muskmelon, etc. 
Next one is the tropical fruits. Now, what are these tropical fruits? Tropical fruits are basically obtained in a very summer or tropical climate where it is neither too humid nor too hot and is always dense and moist in climate. So here you get tropical fruits that is not available throughout the country nor throughout the season where it has certain season where it actually produces. Now they're grown in a warm climate and they have a, a considered to be somewhat more exotic fruits and they're available throughout the world or some tropical fruits includes, for example, you have avocados, coconut, banana, fig, mangoes, guava, papaya, pineapple, pomegranate, and kiwi. Even durian, that is also one of the fruit that is available in Thailand. So these are the fruits that are called exotic fruits where they're not widely available throughout the season. There are certain seasons where these are available and they also require certain kind of climatic conditions to grow these. So these are the classifications of fruits. I'll repeat again, the different classifications of fruits includes berries, pits, or citrus, melon, and tropical fruits. So the next chapter is vegetables, classification of vegetables. We shall continue this in the next chapter. Thank you.